Welcome back. It seems that we have returned to what appears to be the asylum. Which begs the question, what just happened? How did we get back here? Was any of that even real? It seems like the only concrete thing we learned was our name. Other than that, I have no idea how much of that actually happened. We did come from somewhere, so we must have been somewhere. Also, it's kind of weird how a lot of the things in the town lined up with stuff we saw in the asylum beforehand. For example, the stained glass windows, which showed the pumpkin patch and the meteor. And there was also the um, kid or guy, I don't know if it was a kid, in the asylum who uh, was talking about being sent to the pumpkin patch. And he even said that the adults had been sent to school, which is where we found them. So that's bizarre. There's definitely some kind of connection there. Anyway, we should probably look around here and see if we can find out what's happening. Maybe we can finally talk to Dr. Morgan. That would be helpful. This part of the asylum at least looks nicer than... Uh, ah, quiet time. Shush you. Um, it looks nicer than the tower in the beginning. Although it's still... The architecture is still kind of bizarre. But at least it's outside and the sun is shining, so that's nice. It's also not about to explode, so... Looks like some kind of drinking fountain. The water fountain looks nasty. Doesn't anybody maintain this place? It sure doesn't seem like it. Oh, this guy is wearing, like, bear slippers or something. Is he wearing big bear feet slippers? That's sure what it seems like. Excuse me, what's your name? Are you serious, man? I'm the king. Um, this guy think he's Elvis. King of what? King of rock and roll, man. I'm Elvis. The Elvis? But I thought you were, uh, well, you know, dead. No, that was all a hoax, man. The pressure was getting to me. I needed a break. You don't look anything like Elvis. For one thing, you're far too skinny. Break from what? All your fame? Fame, drugs, food, you name it. I need a time to relax, sober up, slim down. Know what I mean? Yes. Well, it looks like you've shed a few pounds since that Hawaiian concert. Thank you. Thank you very much. I guess that explains it? Doesn't explain the complete lack of resemblance, though. Where is that awful music coming from? I wish I knew, man. That stuff is for the birds. Yeah, it is kind of an annoying tune that's playing, isn't it? Enough to drive some people crazy, perhaps. Do you know anything about the other patients? They ain't patients. These are my fans, man. Let me tell you, these are the best fans in the world. You know, I got the impression that we're not actually talking to the king. Just a guess. But at least it's a step up from people who are, you know, turning into plants. So we'll call that a plus. Let's just keep looking around. Talking to people, seeing if we can find out anything. Is this is a nurse. That guy looks like he's gonna eat me. Um, I hope not. Staff might know something, though. Excuse me, what's your name? Stan Dombrowski, don't forget it. Where am I? The courtyard. I, I could have told that. I'm not crazy. I shouldn't be here. Shut up before I pound you one. His bedside manner needs work. Also, that's what all the crazy people say, so that probably doesn't help much. Where is that awful music coming from? Doc's doing some kind of test in the observation room. Oh? What kind of test? How should I know, maggot? Presumably it's a test to see how quickly this music will drive us even more crazy. 
I know this will sound nuts, but I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all the adults, but not the kids. Ah, uh, shut up! Yeah, if you're trying to convince people you're sane, maybe don't lead with that story. Okay, well, he's not very helpful, is he? How about this guy? <laughs> Looks to be wearing a tutu, maybe? Nice tutu, old man. Excuse me, what's your name? Skippy! Skippy, sure. Looks like Picard's evil brother. Where is that awful music coming from? I don't know, Q-tip. Q-tip? Yeah. Your big cotton head looks like it belongs in a big ear. <laughs> okay. Do you know anything about the other patients? Do you know anything about the other patients? Very funny, old man. Very funny, old man. <laughs> Okay, he's not very helpful. Somehow I'm... I'm feeling that's gonna be the theme here. People not being very helpful. There's our staff member there. Not a friendly looking guy at all. Excuse me, what's your name? Why do you damn loons always gotta talk so damn much? Christ! My name's Hector, Hector Vasquez. Now get the hell away from me, you look like a goddamn mummy. I think we need better staff here. I think we need better everything here, honestly. Where am I? Where do you think? The asylum, you nut job. Why is my head all wrapped up like this? Cause you're so freaking ugly, I guess. <laughs> okay, mummy man, I'll be straight with you. You see, when the little green men came to- Ah, uh, forget it, you jerk. I thought we already knew that, because of the car accident. I'm not crazy! I shouldn't be here! Hey, don't blow a head, Pipe Psycho. That act won't get you anywhere with me. I wasn't expecting it to. Where is that awful music coming from? You mean you don't see the orchestra full of pink elephants? Very funny. Huh. I guess you lost your sense of humor when you lost your marbles. Perhaps. I know this will sound nuts, but I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all the adults, but not the kids. Good for you. Why don't you go back there? Alright, I'm thinking it's too much to hope for, but I'm just going to keep talking to the staff until one of them can help us. I wonder what's on his mind. Excuse me, what's your name? John Whitefoot, Max. Don't you remember? No, I'm sorry. Where am I? The asylum, of course. In the courtyard. We had to evacuate the tower cells because of the explosion. Honestly, I don't think anybody should have been in the tower cells to begin with. Also, I think we found the only nice guy here. What explosion? The generator. It was supposed to be repaired this week. I guess they were a little too late. Oh, what about all the patients up there? I'm afraid you were the only one who survived, my friend. Interesting. If we didn't actually go to a weird town with alien monsters, then how did we survive that? I'm the only survivor? My god! How many people died up there? I'd say 15 or so. The fire spread quickly after the second explosion. Then there was no way to reach them in time, but how did you manage to escape? If I told you, you'd think I'm really insane. Try me. I'd like to know how you survived this disaster. I know this will sound nuts, but I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all the adults, but not the kids. I see. Ah, uh, you must think I'm as loony as the others. No, that's not true. I have my own theory on what could have happened to you. Alright, I wonder what that is. Yeah, none of that really makes sense. How did we survive? Unless it actually did happen? Hmm. I'm not crazy. I shouldn't be here. That's a familiar story around here, my friend. Where is that awful music coming from? 
Dr. Morgan is testing a few theories on how music affects the patients. He's conducting his research in the observation room. Could he stop? What's your theory? Well, I think that maybe your mind couldn't handle the thought of you abandoning those who needed help, so you constructed a world to hide in, inside your mind, until it was safe to come back. The town represented the tower, the children were the patients, and the missing adults represented the doctors and other authority figures who weren't around to help. Huh, maybe you're right, but it all seemed so real. Your mind is capable of wondrous things, Max. In your head, it was real. I suppose that's possible, although that doesn't explain all the connections to the stuff in that we saw in the tower. Although maybe our mind just used those elements to construct the fantasy. Hmm. Well, at least this guy was nice, so that's a plus. How about this one? Quite a big fellow. Excuse me, what's your name? Jeez, Max. It's the same as it was yesterday and the day before that. I'm Bruce. Bruce Chambers, remember? Man, that wreck must have really rattled your brain. A car wreck? Yeah. Taking that nurse's car for a joyride wasn't the brightest thing you've ever done. I mean, now your face is all messed up and you can't remember squat. Seems like it. Where am I? You've been here before, don't you remember? No, this place isn't familiar at all. It's the courtyard, Max. You like it here. It's the screams in the background that really, like, make me like it here. I'm not crazy. I shouldn't be here. Now just calm down, Max. Calm down. But I'm not crazy. Sure you're not, Max. Sure. Where is that awful music coming from? Oh, the observation room. Dr. Morgan said that he was doing some auditory experiments, whatever that means. At least, you know, everybody's telling us the same thing here, that it's Dr. Morgan, and that is the guy we want to talk to, I guess, so. I know this will sound nuts, but I was just in this weird little town where a, a huge alien plant killed all of the adults, but not the kids. You're right. You mean you believe me? No, I mean it sounds nuts. Just take your pill, Max, and you'll feel better. Staff isn't really teaches us anything, but if we could find Dr. Morgan, that would be a step in the right direction. Looks like this is an empty fountain or something. Dried up and depressing. Yeah. Are these gargoyles supposed to be conducive to sanity? The architect was probably an inmate. That's possible. Are these gargoyles supposed to be conducive to sanity? Why can I not skip this? The architect is probably an inmate. They like to get in your way. Um, that's where we came from. Um, alright. Looks like the circus is coming to town. The very creepy circus, anyway. Who ever heard of a stained glass window with clown faces? Too weird. Somebody who was too obsessed with Stephen King's It, I guess. Very creepy looking. How sad she looks. Doctor? Are you my doctor? Welcome back to the States, Max. I've already managed to assemble a team of top researchers at Mercy, but I'm especially glad that you finally decided to accept my offer. Dr. Law. Doctor, are you all right? I am a doctor. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Yes, I am a doctor, but I don't work here. Oh. I was hoping you were a new doctor. Since my friends stopped talking to me, I've been so lonely. I need someone to cure him so he could talk to me again. Okay. We're learning things. I guess our full name is Dr. Max Lawton. And I guess we were a doctor before we ended up here. 
Not somebody who worked here, though, by the looks of it. Who is your friend? Crag. Well, what's wrong with him? Does he have laryngitis? I... I don't know. Maybe. All I know is that he hasn't visited or talked to me in a while. Okay. I don't know why we jumped to the laryngitis thing. Because he's not talking to her? Has Crag gone away? Maybe he was released from the asylum and didn't tell you. No. He wasn't a patient here. He just used to visit me by the fountain on sunny days. Okay, was he a guest, I guess? Why are you so lonely? I mean, there are other people here to talk to. I don't like them. They're all crazy. Crag was different. He was tall, dark, and handsome. He thought I was pretty. I'll bet you are pretty, under that heavy hood. Why do you hide your face? Since Crag stopped visiting me, I don't want to show my ugly face to anyone. Oh, stop talking like that. You're not ugly. You're just being polite. You don't fool me. Trust me, compared to what we've been seeing recently, everyone's pretty. Where is that awful music coming from? Oh. You can hear it too. Thank goodness. I thought I was imagining it. Where is it coming from? Um, I don't know. I mean, you do know. Like, five different people have told you by this point. Where do these big doors lead? It sounds like someone's inside. Preacher Bob is giving a sermon inside. I wanted to go into the chapel myself, but the doors are stuck. I can't budge them. Well, how did the preacher get inside if the chapel doors are stuck? He must have had help from his little lackey. Norm. And she moves over there. Creepy looking trees. What kind of weird trees are these? What kind of weird trees are these? Um, I should probably try to get those doors open, but I want to talk to this person Why over here. Why is that woman licking her lips? I feel very sane in comparison to her. Alright. That does not bode well. Excuse me, what's your name? My name is Vera. I think it sounds nice. I ate my husband with carrots and rice. Okay. Moving on. Where is that awful music coming from? I like this music. It's got a great beat. It makes me want to stay on my feet. That means you really are crazy. I guess the implication is that she's a cannibal or something. I hope the red around her lips is like lipstick or something. Because I sincerely doubt that they would have just let blood uh, on her. Even this asylum doesn't seem that incompetent. Do you know anything about the other patients? They'd be yummy in my tummy. What do you mean by that? Chop them all up, put them in a pot, add some potatoes and see what you've got. Uh, okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Potatoes. Mash them, dash them, stick them in a stew. This game was made well before that. Whoa, those are some big doors. Let's see if we could open them. They might be stronger than the girl. That works. All right. It's a um, chapel of some kind, I guess. Something tells me that he is not the uh, asylum's priest. These are just mannequins. Well, at least they'll be quiet. These are just mannequins. Why'd they chain his hands to his feet? That does seem... Uh, Annoying. It doesn't stop him from walking around anyway, so what's the point? 
Excuse me, what's your name? I am Saint Norman, Disciple of Bob. Disciple of Bob? What faith is that? It is the truth. Bob's word is truth. He is the eyes and ears of God. Oh, glorious and most holy of Bob's. Bob is the most Bob of all. Hallelujah! Praise be to Bob! Just doesn't sound very impressive when the main prophet of the religion is called Bob. The preacher seems to be interested in the sin of stealing. Did something happen? Oh, a most foul and wicked occurrence has befallen our most majestic and glorious house of worship. A sinful calamity of wretched thievery and deception has spirited away the holiest of holy tokens from the house of Bob. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up for me. The preacher seems to be pretty riled up. Is he always like this? No. But one of the evil sinners took something very valuable from the house of Bob. Therefore, we are watchful of all who would approach. Stay back! But all I want to do is talk to the preacher. Then do it from here! Okay, fair enough. I really think I want to get closer to him anyway. Seems rather eccentric. Excuse me, what's your name? My name? Disciple Norman, this lost sheep seeks the truth. Seek the truth, preacher. Amen, Norman. I go by many names, my child, but you may call me Preacher Bob. You seem to be quite, well, energetic about the topic of stealing. Why is that? Oh, the wicked are among us, my friend. They spread their vile ideas and sinful thoughts like a cancer. And now, the sinners have desecrated the sanctity of his house. You can't really hear that he's talking about stealing. Like, if we could hear part of his sermon, maybe we'd know what this was about, but we can't, so... Desecrated? How did they do that? Evil thieves slipped into his great house and performed a terrible deed. With the devil's hands, they stole a most holy of holy symbols. What has our society come to when the wretched pawns of Satan feel free to run rampant in Bob's house? Can I hear an amen? Amen, preacher. Thank you, Norman. Sure. What did this holy symbol look like? Maybe I'll come across it. They stole no less than the sacred cross of the church, my son. A golden testament to his good word. Okay. I guess we'll keep an eye out for that. Your parishioners seem a little, um, wooden. The lost sheep doesn't recognize the flock, Brother Norman. Open his eyes, Father. Amen to that. My flock is special in the eyes of the Lord, my son. Right now, they sit motionless in deep prayer. So strong is their devotion that they appear to be made of wood to the common man. But in truth, they are as alive as you and I. I'm okay, if you say so. Sure, let's go with that. All right. Uh, it doesn't look like we can look at anything on the floor here. An old broom. But we cannot go over there, so we can't do anything with the broom. Oh, now we can hear it. Would not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Okay, yeah, he does seem to be talking about theft a lot. Alright. I wonder who did that. Can we ask any of the people? How am I supposed to by walking? No, can't talk about it. Alright, we'll just have to keep an eye out then. Unless we can ask the staff. Mm. 
Nope. Um, let's see. This looks like an office of some kind, maybe? Is that the source of the music? I bet it is. Maybe Dr. Morgan's in there, then. Um, he looks like he's getting wet. Also, is he holding a fish? He looks way too attached to that fish. Excuse me, what's your name? <coughs> uh, sir, yes sir. Eh? Who the hell are you? Leave me alone. Can't an old man get any rest around this ship? Where is that awful music coming from? <coughs> uh, quit talking to me. I need to sleep off me hangover from shore league. Hellful. Another leaky pipe. Someone should fix that, too. We had a leaky pipe in the tower, but that was a bit more severe, considering, you know, most of the rest of it was missing. Some sort of control box for these water lines. I'll need something to pry it open. Alright, well, um, we don't have anything right now, so that's not helpful. wonder if we could fix the fountain. I'm sure that would make the girl happy. Let's see if Dr. Morgan is in here. Somebody's in here. Looks like a doctor. What's he writing? Hello? You must be Dr. Morgan! Hmm? Oh! We thought we'd lost you in the fire, Max. Where have you been? I... I was somewhere else for a while. Well, it's good that you're safe, Max. But you seem to get into trouble whenever you go away. I've told you before that you need to stay in control if you expect to get well. I didn't just go away in my mind, Dr. Morgan. I was in an actual place, a small town with children. They were real, they... Now, Max, don't get all excited. I can have one of the orderlies restrain you if necessary. Will it be necessary, Max? No, I'm fine. I want to get well, Doctor, but I have so many strange thoughts, unanswered questions. Curiosity is a good thing, Max. I wish I had some answers for you. Perhaps we can talk later, after my work here is done. What fire? What happened? The generator exploded. <sighs> Too bad about all of those others up there in the tower. We could only save so many. Others? What do you mean? Don't you understand, Max? The fire. It wiped out all of the cells in the tower. Everyone inside. You're lucky to be alive. No one seems to be bothered by this. Does anyone know what happened to make the generator explode? We haven't discovered the cause yet, but of course we're concerned about all the patients. Right now we're trying to keep everyone calm and pleasant. Don't want them to dwell on disturbing things, do we? No, surely not. I guess that makes sense. What are you writing, Doctor? I'm conducting an experiment. The effects of different types of music on all the patients. Okay, well that's not as helpful as I was hoping it to be. A radio? Wonder if I can get any news from the outside world. It's a very old fashioned looking radio. Active only in newborns, DNAV goes on to deform, cripple, and kill victims within a few years. Active only in newborns. Okay. I guess that's the only news we can get. Some kind of DNAV thing that kills newborns, I guess. Anatomical diagrams. Must be part of Morgan's work. Anatomical diagrams. Must be part of Morgan's work. It's very inconsistent whether or not it lets you skip certain lines of dialogue. I guess this is the source of the music. Must be piped in through the PA system. 
hair or something? An old piece of equipment, but it seems to be working fine. Unfortunately. That is much better. I'd really love to, but I won't. Can't take the player, I guess. A record. Bella Donna in A flat. All right. A record. The Ballad of Captain Dick. A record. Rockabilly Swing Thing. All right. I guess we could try to play different types of music. We're basically doing uh, Dr. Morgan's experiment for him. Curious to see what will happen. A record. Bella Donna in A flat. A record. The Donner Party Waltz. I think that's the one that was playing because that's the only one we didn't hear when we... Uh, or that wasn't named when we were picking him up. A record. Rockabilly Swing Thing. A record. The Ballad of Captain Dick. A record. Right, let's try one. Looks like the king likes this music. Long live the king. Wait, how do you even know that? Unless this is supposed to be an Elvis record. It's possible, I guess. A record. The Ballad of Captain Dick. Let me guess. Fish guy is gonna react to that. I hope he only dances with the fish. Can we talk to him while he's doing that? What do you think about the record that's playing now? Ah, now there be a melody any good sailor would dance a jig to. Okay. All right. Well, we have um, one more record to try, but we'll do that in the next video.